So in a previous video, we looked at graphs like this and we interpreted them, and we used words to do that. A strong positive association, a moderate negative association, a weak negative association, no association at all. There are lots of other ones, but you get the idea. Words, 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 words. I'm a maths teacher. Numbers is what I want. Correlation coefficient, Pearson's R, is a number that we can use to describe the association in a scatter plot. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of how to calculate it right now because it's really complicated, but I am going to explain it to you. We have Pearson's R correlation is a number between positive 1 and negative 1. Now, 1 is a perfect positive association. Dots that if you were to draw a line through, the line would go through every single one of those dots. A little known fact, I used to be a fruiter, I used to sell fruit, and if you go to the shop and buy fruit, say bananas, however many kilos you buy and however much money it costs you, that's a perfect positive correlation. If you buy three kilos of bananas, it'll cost you, say, $6. If you buy um, five kilos of bananas, it will cost you $10. It's a straight line. Perfect positive association, one. And so as you might expect, a perfect negative association is negative one, and it's a straight set of dotted lines downwards. If you're far away from home and you get in your car and start driving at a constant speed, the distance from your house will get less and less and less and less until you are home at zero. So distance from your house, time, perfect negative association as long as you drive at exactly the same speed for the entire time. And zero is just random dots on a page, no association. I'm not going to give you an example. You know what no association means, random dots. Now, it's not just zero that's no association. We can kind of expand that out a little bit. And we can say that if your R value is between 0 0.25 and negative 0 0.25, anywhere within that bound, it's going to be no association. I think you can probably see where I'm going with this. Between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 is going to be weak positive. Between negative 0 0.25 and negative 0 0.5 is going to be weak negative. Between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, moderate positive. And between negative 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.75, moderate negative. Finally, no surprise here, strong positive from 0 0.75 to 1 and strong negative from negative 0 0.75 to negative one. It's probably important to write all of that down because you might get asked a question like. So two variables have a correlation coefficient of r equals 0 0.6. Describe the association. It's going to be really straightforward. We go to our little graph here and we say, well, 0 0.6, that's about there, 0 0.6. It falls into the moderate positive. So we can say that the association is moderate positive. You could also make a small attempt at sort of sketching what that might look like, right? It's positive, so it's moving up in that direction, and it's moderate, so it's dots going upwards, but a little bit spread out, not like right next to each other. That looks like it's probably got an R of about 0 0.6, which leads me to a different question you might get asked. You might get asked, look at this graph, tell me the approximate R value. So we can have a bit of a crack at this. We can see that it's heading downwards, so it's negative, right? So it's somewhere between 0 and negative 1. And we might say, well, they're sort of close-ish. Um, they're probably a little bit closer together than this previous picture here, which we said was uh, 0 0.6. So this is going to be like negative more than that. So probably R uh, is approximately negative 0 0.7. Um, now, there's no right answer there, but maybe it was like a multiple choice question. Maybe they gave you five different R values to choose from, and it's your job to choose the R value that most looks like that one. That would be a great exam question. Super important, it only works for linear associations, linear like a line. So if you tried to calculate the R of something that looked like this, well, the R value for that would probably be zero, uh, or it might be something else, but it would be meaningless and you just wouldn't want to do it uh, because it only works for linear associations. And you can see this looks more like it's it's a bendy one, right? It's non-linear. Not much more to say there, just R is meaningless if you're dealing with non-linear. It only works for linear association. So you know R is a number that measures linear association. You know it can go between negative 1 and 1, but I haven't told you how to calculate it. Now, if you're interested, you should stick around because I'll explain kind of how it's calculated, but you should know it's very complicated to calculate this, and there's a low likelihood that anyone would ever ask you to calculate it using the formula I'm about to show you. 
So if you're still here, thanks. It means you're a curious person. I appreciate you. So let's go through this. Um, we've got a bunch of points. Each of those points has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So this might be 12, 18, and this might be 3, 15, and all of them are going to have things like that. Now there are 12 dots here, and there, that means there's going to be 12 x coordinates and 12 y coordinates. So what I'm going to do is take all of the x coordinates, add them together and divide them by 12. In other words, find the average x coordinates of all of these dots. Now that's the average x coordinate of all of these dots, 7, and I've ruled a line through 7. And now what I'm going to do is measure the distance of every dot from there to there. In other words, find the difference between the x coordinate and the average x coordinate. And then we can do the same with the y coordinate. So we take the average y coordinate of every single one of these dots and rule a neat little line from there. And then we just find all of these distances. And so now I've found all of the distances from the dots to this pink line here. And now we're kind of in business, but there's still a bit of an issue here because Look at the scale of the x-axis compared to the scale of the y-axis. And look how spread out they are here compared to how spread out they are here. We have to do this weird thing called standardization. So essentially what we do is using the standard deviation, which you'll know is a measure of spread, we take these and we standardize the width of this and the width of this. It's a bit technical, uh, but you're going to have to sort of trust me on this. What we're going to do is take this line here, this line here, um, standardize them, and then multiply the lines together. So let me show you what I mean for this particular dot, because we actually have to do this calculation for every single dot. It's really crazy. So we take the x value, 12, and we subtract the average x value, 7, and then we divide by the standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation is a number, and you know it's a measure of spread. I don't know what the standard deviation is for this because I'm just making it up, but we don't really need to know. Okay, now you multiply that by 18 minus whatever this pink value is here, it's probably like 14, so 18 minus 14 over the standard deviation. Now it's important to note these standard deviations are different. This is the standard deviation of the x's and this is the standard deviation of the y's. So this gives you the standardized area of that rectangle. Crazy. Now we're going to do that for every single one of the 12 dots there. So we do the sum of all of these particular ones. Now I'll get rid of these numbers and sort of, because it's not just this dot, it's all of the dots, right? Just need to put something in uh, that's a little more general. And then finally, once we've done all of that, we divide it by the number of dots minus one to come up with a sort of uh, variance here, a sort of average. Now when you do that, it's going to spit out the R value, and the R value is going to be somewhere between uh, negative one and one. And closer to one means it looks a bit more like this, and closer to negative one means it looks like that. And you might be thinking, like, well, but, but what, why? Why? And the reason is that if you've got things in this quadrant, here you've got 12 minus 7, which is 5, and you've got 18 minus 14, which is 4. Both of those numbers end up being positive, and when you multiply them together, you get a positive answer. Now, in this quadrant, if you do the same thing, you get a negative multiplied by a negative, which is also a positive. You get a positive answer here. So, dots that appear in this quadrant and dots that appear in this quadrant are positive. Dots that appear in this quadrant and dots that appear in this quadrant are negative. So what it means is that if you get a lot of dots in this quadrant and this quadrant, you're going to get a very positive answer. If you get more dots appearing in this quadrant and this quadrant, you're going to get a more negative answer. So that's why positive, lots of dots in these quadrants, negative, lots of dots in these quadrants. Okay, uh, that's... Whew. That gives you an, int uh, an intuition for how that formula works, but seriously, we never calculate it by hand because it's such a pain. We grab our calculator and we type in the numbers and the calculator spits out an R value for us. We put it into Excel. Excel has a nice little formula in it that'll spit out the R value for you. We never use a formula that complicated. I just wanted to show it to you. 